Hi everyone, this is Natraj. I am back with another video. Today I am going to talk about that setting and configuring the Hatchcock Vault server through Terraform. What is a Vault? Hatchcock Vault is a free and open source tool designed for securely storing and assessing the secret. It can also do other things like encrypt the data for your applications. We can call us that cloud agnostic secret management systems or safely storing and managing the sensitive data in hybrid cloud. It can be used to generate that dynamic short life credentials also that encrypted that application data on the fly. Key vault feature, first one is that secured secret storage. So by default vault can be encrypted that secret before writing to that persistent storage. Next one is that supporting for dynamic secret. So vault can be generated the secret in on demand and revoke them that after the leaves over. Next one is that leasing and renewal. So all the secret in the vault have leases associated with that. So the secret is automatically revoked at the end of the lease. The renewal is possible to via inbuilt with that renewal APIs. Next one is that identity based access. So we can able to integrate with the different clouds with the authentications. Next one is that encryption of that application data. So vault can be used to encrypted and decrypt data that is be stored. Vault server mode. There are two types of mode is available. The first one is that dev mode for development. Second one is that prod mode for QA and productions. So in this video, so we will going to create that dev mode via Terraform. Hatchcock platform types. So there are three types of platforms available. Vault open source, enterprise and cloud HCP. So the open source and enterprise editions are self managed so that you can host it anywhere. The enterprise edition is containing about that all the open source features, but it having some S of feature is available. Vault HCP cloud is a SaaS solution. Currently that cloud vault cluster it can be support either AWS and Azure provider. Installation of the vault Ubuntu through Terraform. The first one is that initialization. So here we are adding that official HCOP link repositories. Next one is that configuring that vault storage. Vault can be stored either in that internal data or we can store as the external called HCOP console. Next one is that configuring the HTTPSS. So here we are determining the listening of API request. Next one is that installation vault server. Here we are executing that vault operation init command so that we can receive an unsealed key and that initial root token. Next one is that seal and unseal. So every installation process of the vault server it will be starting with a sealed state. So we have to unseal the process of more than three times. Next one is that configuring that Nginx reverse proxy. So the Nginx reverse proxy is a server sitting between that internal application and the external cluster. So basically that forwarding the client request to that upright bed server. Next one is that configuring the subdomain. So subdomain is that DNS record for the host name. So belongs to that your domain. In my case, I'm creating that vault.roboforming.link. GitHub links. The entire Terraform code is available on my repo. If you want, we can check it out. I am at that Visual Studio code. So first we will be see on that main.tf file. So in this main.tf file, the first one is that AWS provider. So basically the AWS provider to interact with the many AWS resource. In my case, I am going to create that instance under that US East one. So next resource is AWS instance. Here I am describing the EC2 instance what I want to create. Uh, you can see here that a image I can hard coded that uh, free tier image name. Next one is instant type. In my case T2 micro I am mentioning. Next one is that user data. In this user data I am providing with my shell script. In this shell script only it be containing that vault's installation as well as that reverse proxy method. So we will be go to that vault underscore script dot sh file. So initially this script will be that I am trying to installing with that uh, uh, GCP keys. Later on that I am adding that official HCOPS uh, Linux repository. Then I am installing that vault and uh, Nginx. 
Next one is that vault.hcl file. This is that vault configurations. So in this HCOP documentation page, you can see that n number of parameters. But in my case, I am provided for only required parameter only added. The first one is the disable underscore catch. I mentioned is the true. So basically that I am disabling the read catch used by the physical storage. Next one is that disable the lock equal to true. Here I am preventing that memory from the swapping to the disk. Next one is that UI equal to true. So I am enabling that GUI access. Next one is that configuring that vault storage. So the storage is the physical backend that vault is used to storing that all the data. I am provided with the file locally only. Next one is that configuring that HTTP access. So you can see the thing the listener here you can add one, one or more listener to determine that how vault is listening for the API request. So for example, in our case, I am I allocating the port called 80,200. So without TLS, next parameter that AP underscore that address, you can see here I am providing that uh, 0020 colon 80,200. Basically that to route the client request. Next one is that maximum lease TTL equal to 10 hours. So here I am perceiving that maximum possibility lease duration for the token. Next one is that default lease TTL equal to 10 hours. So specify that default lease duration for the token and the secret here. So next one is I am allocating that cluster name I provided with the vault. So another parameter is that raw underscore storage endpoint equal to true. So allowing that deprecation and encryption of the raw data. I am scrolling down below. So after that I am enabling the vault service I make it enable to run travel. Moving to the next command. These are the default nginx file I am deleted. I am created with the one dummy file dot vault. In this dummy file I am added that reverse proxy method. You can see here that uh, server underscore name. I, this is my subdomain name and allocating the port equal to 80 for nginx. So this is a reverse proxy. Uh, the vault is running on 80,200. But uh, whenever the user is interacting with the AT, automatically that rerouting the request to that vault. So this this complete uh, set of code is the reverse proxy things. I'm append that enter to the vault file. Then I'm creating the symbolic link. Similar like that also I'm enabling that uh, starting the service as well as for that run levels. Here I'm setting that uh, vault dot address. So basically I'm trying to enable with the CLI level to interacting these things. So here we have to uh, export and I'm also I am append the value into that batch.rse. This is for permanent purpose I'm adding it here. Next one is that installation dot vault server. So whenever you are executing that this vault operation init command, we have to define this uh, above command. Otherwise, uh, we can't be able to interact with the vault server. So basically this uh, output we are storing with init dot file. It will be containing that sealed information as well as that root information. So I'm moving to that security.tf file. So this file I'm particularly allowing that SSH port as well as for that uh, uh, AT port number. Then I'm moving back to that main.tf file. Yeah, this is a data resource block AWS underscore route 53 zone. So basically that it be providing the detail about that uh, route 53 host information. Next one that uh, AWS route 53 record. Here I'm creating that uh, subdomain record. You can see here uh, whatever the instance is creating you now that I'm getting that public value from here and also that zoner ID I'm referring with the data block uh, I'm getting from here. Then I am mentioned the dependent on basically the once that instance is created then only you can executing this particular resource. So we managed to define that dependent on. So we are moving to the terminal we can executing the entire uh, code. Right now I am at the terminal I am going to the terraform source code directory. So already I cloned earlier. Yeah, these are the list of files it be containing. So I'm directly executing the Terraform apply command. Before I'm checking with the Terraform I init and uh, plan command already. So I directly I'm going to execute the Terraform apply command here. Yeah, it can ask me for the three resources going to add. There is no changes, no distrites. I can provide the input is yes here. 
so now the ec2 instance is creating after that it's going to install that vault and uh, according that uh, my nginx configuration everything it quite takes some time yeah terraform job successfully completed so i'm moving to that uh, uh, chrome browser so just i'm entering my subdomain name yeah now i can able to assess my uh, vault page so here we have to provide our uh, root uh, token here so in this case i have to log into that server so i'm moving to that aws console page just i'm refreshing that particular instant page here yeah i can see that vault instance now i'm copying the public ip here then i'm moving to that my mobile xtem so just i'm um, provide my ip here and uh, provide the username called umundu so um, i'm providing my ppk key yes here yeah i log into that uh, vault server so just i'm going to that opt uh, directory here you remember i am already i saving the one of the file called init.file just i can put it cat so here you, we have to copy that unsealed key one then i go back to that my vault page just i am paste it here then you can click the unsealed yeah one is successfully completed we have to enter that uh, another two i copy that uh, unsealed key two and paste it here then i can copy the uh, unsealed uh, key 3 so then i can click the unsealed here yeah. so it asking for the token so initially so right now it, it can i am login as the administrator so that uh, in this case i have to pause that uh, my root token this is the root token here i copy the entire thing just i paste it yes i successfully log into that my vault page video that's it in this video so hopefully this video will be helpful to everyone thanks for watching bye